LDAP stands for the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. And it's a protocol that was created to read directories, just like the name implies. And in this context, a directory is a set of records. And if it sounds like directory really means a directory, it's because that's exactly why it was created. The phone companies, which had lists of names and addresses and telephone numbers, needed a very easy way to access all of that data. So they created something that was a standard. There was a specification for storing this data called X. 500. And it was a standard written by the International Telecommunications Union. Those people really know all about directories, after all. This directory access protocol ran on the OSI protocol stack. So this wasn't even a lightweight directory access protocol yet. Originally, it was just the directory access protocol. And this OSI protocol stack is not your OSI model. There are many comparisons between those. But this was an actual protocol stack, very similar to a TCP IP protocol stack or an IPX protocol stack. And what happened was that we needed a way to run this over TCP IP. So the lightweight directory access protocol was created. And that's what we normally see being used today on our networks today. It runs over TCP IP, and it uses TCP port 389. Occasionally, you will also see it over UDP port 389. This LDAP protocol, then, is the protocol that we're using to query all of these different directories that we have. In your environment, if you're in a large, even medium-sized organization these days, Days, there's a central directory. If you're in Microsoft Windows, it's Active Directory. If you're using Novell, it's E Directory. There's many different kinds of directories that we would put this information in. And it's a central repository and database of all of the people who are logging into your network, all of the resources that are available. These are extremely important directories that are used. So this directory is an x.500 standard directory, and we're using LDAP to access it. Whether you're using Microsoft Active Directory, you're using E Directory, using Apple's open directory. There's even a format called Open LDAP, so you can run it for absolutely free with open source software. It's an extremely popular way to gather and access information from these central directories. If you were to look at this X500 information that is stored in these directories, you'll notice that we access it with a certain syntax. And this syntax uses an attribute equals value as a pair that you will see. So there's groups of pairs that are put together to find a particular user, to reference a particular resource. You'll see it as the most specific attribute listed first, very similar to other methods you might use, for instance, going to websites www.professormesser.com, the most specific attribute is the web server. My larger domain name, and obviously .com, is extremely broad. So you'll see things like this. There is a common name. CN is the attribute. Common name is Widget Web, so this must be a web server. It is in the organizational unit of marketing, the organization of Widget. It is in a locality of London, the state of London, the country of Great Britain, the domain component is widget and the domain component of .com. So you can actually see all the way through here how you would access an individual web server in this x.500 LDAP concept. If we were to view this graphically, it would look like a tree where you start at a root and you start all the way out to what we call this hierarchical structure of these resources. You have container objects, which are countries and organizations and organizational units. And then you also have leaf objects. Leaf objects are resources like users, printers, servers, files, all kinds of different things. So your tree starts here at the root, and it works its way out through the containers and finally to those leaf objects. When LDAP was first created, there was really no built-in security associated with LDAP. But in LDAP version 3, we have something called the Simple Authentication and Security Layer that can be layered on top of that. Now, you don't have to use security for LDAP. You could have no authentication whatsoever, which means anybody can read information from that directory. It may be that anybody could write information to that directory, depending on how you configure it. There might be simple authentication, which means you have a, a client providing a name and a password, and it's usually sent in plain text. There's no additional security associated with that or layered on top of it. But in most environments, we want encryption. It's too easy to grab information off the network. So we will use this simple authentication and security layer where both the client and the server are negotiating a mechanism to use for encrypting that data and communicating to the database. We often have two levels of access associated with this. There might be a read-only access because we might need to find a web server. We might need to find a printer 
we might need to find a user. And we don't want to restrict anybody from being able to find what they need. So there may be just a read-only or query access. But you may also need to update this directory. And there may be a certain group of people in your organization that have update access. And they're able to both read and write to the directory. You need to make sure then that your database, this LDAP database that you've created with all these X500 records inside of it, are only being able to be seen by the people who need to. You don't want everybody in the world having a look at your directory. So another important part of security as it's associated with these LDAP databases is to make sure you use the firewall to prevent anybody from doing LDAP queries to that database from outside of your network or from parts of your network where you'd like to hide that information. And again, TCP port 389 and UDP port 3D9 are those ports that you should be using on your firewall to prevent access. LDAP is an extremely popular set of databases and methods to be able to access information. And you should be very familiar with at least the overview of how that works in those organizations.